Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Today is Monday, November 21st, 2022. Please call to order at 631. First order of business we had have is the approval of the minutes of November 14th. I motion we approve the minutes of November 14th. Seconded. We have a motion made and a <clears throat> seconded to approve the minutes of November 14th. As she said. All any questions? Without hearing any questions or changes. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. November 14th minutes have been approved as submitted. Next up under new business is that we had originally scheduled a dangerous nuisance dog hearing. The owner has requested a delay and all parties has agreed that the uh, agreement of about the extension so at the present time it is the dog hearing has been canceled for this evening. Next up is the appointment of Daniel Chimzinski as a snow and ice seasonal laborer. Jeff? Yep, the uh, highway superintendent is recommending Mr. Chimzinski um, basically to help with snow plowing when we have storms, um, treating the roads, plowing, shoveling, um, and as previously mentioned, with a starting rate of $22 an hour. Okay. At this time, I will accept a motion to appoint Daniel Chimzinski as a snow and ice seasonal laborer. A motion we um, appoint Daniel Chimzinski as a seasonal snow and ice laborer. Seconded. We have a mo motion made and seconded for the appointment of Daniel Chimzinski. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Next up is the Boston Post Kane Award. Jeff. Yes. Um, unfortunately, our, our most recent awardee um, passed. The new oldest resident in town is Miss Mary Warner, um, per, per the clerk. Uh, so I believe I spoke to um, Miss Warner, and she is going to have. Uh, family around in a couple weeks so she invited the select board to uh, come to her house uh, to present the cane in a few weeks but I thought make it official do the vote um, at a meeting so you don't have to take any votes there or anything like that okay so so this is that is the official um, Boston Post came. It's uh, back in 1909. The publisher of the Boston Post, Mr. Edwin Grazier, distributed 431 gold-headed ebony canes to select wards in selected New England towns, Sunderland being one of them. Uh, this cane was then to be given to the oldest male resident of the town, compliments of the Boston Pope, Boston Post. The cane was used by the residents, but the ownership was with the towns. So over over time, you'll know, many towns have misplaced their canes. Uh, Sunon has been very fortunate. Uh, we've always maintained pretty good tracking of the cane. And we have it displayed, permanently displayed, inside our meeting room on the back wall. For So typically when we go to, we'll take the cane and the cane will spend some time with the oldest resident, but then it's returned to town. So it can be displayed 
and maintain and to maintain the legacy of their town. Uh, the canes were made by J.F. Fradley from New York. The ebony used for the cane came from the Congo in Africa and cut to cane length. Seasoned for six months, turned on lathes, coated and polished. The canes had 14 karat gold heads, two inches long, decorated by hand, and a feral tip. The description of the head reads, presented to the, by the Boston Post to the oldest citizen of Sunderland, Massachusetts, to be transmitted. To be transmitted, the first Sunderland resident to receive the cane was Luther Osgood Chittenden. Althea P. Hubbard was the first female Sunderland resident to receive the cane. So we no longer just award to male. It is the oldest resident. Sunderland, recent Sunderland residents who received the Boston Post include Elizabeth Mendelevich, Bud Vanzaghi, Miss Rodzins, Jesse Kadecki, and recently passed Helen Rodak. So at this time, I would entertain a motion from the board to honor Miss Mary Warner from North Sunderland, by the way, with the uh, Boston Post cane as the oldest resident of Sunderland. I motion yeah. that we present the cane to Mary Warner. Seconded. Motion made and second. I, I will say as members of the board, Crystal last year had the opportunity. This is one of the real enjoyable things it is. that a member of the select board does. And hopefully we'll be all three be able to attend in a few weeks. Um, but I know I know when we specifically when we talked to Helen she was full of stories for us, wasn't she, Chris? She was. So, so we had a wonderful, we had a wonderful time, and I think uh, Jeff, as a town administrator, it's a pretty nice thing for town administrators too, because there's nothing; it's all just good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Absolutely. So we have a motion to name and honor. Mrs. Mary Warner, as the oldest Sunderland resident. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, we have a 3-0 vote to honor Mary Warner as our Boston Post Sunderland oldest resident. Okay, next up, Jeff, our holiday schedule. 2023 holiday schedule. Um, so unless otherwise noted, uh, the holidays will be observed on the dates mentioned. New Year's Day, January 1st is a Sunday. That's going to be observed on Monday. Martin Luther King Jr. Day on January 16th. President's Day on February 20th. Patriot's Day on April 17th. Memorial Day on May 29th. Juneteenth on June 19th, Independence Day on July 4th, Labor Day on September 4th, Columbus Day on October 9th, Veterans Day is Saturday, November 11th, and it will be observed on November 9th, which is a Thursday. Thanksgiving 2023 is November 23rd. Christmas Day 2023 uh, is on Monday, uh, the 25th, and New Year's Day uh, 2024 is on a Monday. Okay, any questions? Nope. Nope. Motion? I motion we accept those as our holidays as presented. Seconded. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded to approve the legal holidays for the town of Sunderland. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 
Jeffrey, three zero. Next up, the uh, FY23 sewer user fees. Yes. So, um, this, uh, as background for anybody who might be interested, uh, Sunderland charges a single flat rate for each sewer unit on a property. It's not based on water usage or <coughs> sewer usage. So uh, the way we determine the fee is the full value of the wastewater treatment budget divided by the total number of sewer units. Uh, the fiscal year 23 budget for the wastewater treatment plant was $400,859. Um, there are 1,266 sewer units. Um, so that comes out to $316.63 per unit. Um, there are two additional sewer units that were added because um, earlier this year, we identified a short-term rental as a commercial property that had three um, sewer units in it split up the number of restrooms. So um, it was previously being charged one, now it's being charged three. So that, that's the increase. Um, the rate increase is $12.79 over the fiscal year 22 rate. So at this time, I will entertain a motion to set the FY23 sewer rate as $316.63 per unit. I motion we set that as 316, 68? 60, 63. 63. 63. As the sewer rate. Seconded. And motion made and seconded to set the sewer, the FY23 sewer user rate at $316.63. Any further discussion? Without hearing any further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff? 3 0. Uh, FY 22 unpaid sewer fees added to tax bills. Yes. So <coughs> every year, um, unpaid sewer fees from the previous fiscal year get added to the current year's real estate taxes. Um, this year we have uh, 19 properties representing 27 sewer units um, and a total of including interest $9,451 um, to be added to property bills for the 19 properties I mentioned. Okay, you want anything on, do you need to do anything on that? Uh, I think just vote to um, to add them to the real estate taxes as presented. So just so I get this in my head, this fiscal year, these are for fiscal year 22. Right. All right. So out of this list, are there one, are some of these going back further than 22 or the fact that Prior to that, they were added to their taxes, so that's no longer an issue. It's a tax issue if something's unpaid. Correct. So on the ones that you're seeing being, being multiples of the three hundred dollar number, those are ones that the unit is set, the house itself is multiple units because it's commercial property or otherwise. Correct. Okay. Yep. Great. All right. Yeah, I motioned that um, we add the sewer, the unpaid sewer to their tax bill. Second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to place the FY22 sewer liens onto the FY2023 tax bills of those residents. Any discussion? Any further discussion? Without hearing any further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero. 
Uh, next up, our requests. Yes, so two weeks ago, um, we had the Village Center Committee uh, co-chairs here, um, and they presented requests for uh, engineering for the design of the redesign of School Street in the amount of $75,000 and um, a request to hire a consultant to help do visioning for the Village Center um, for $50,000. Um, maybe that's a good place to stop and then I could talk about elevators separately. Go ahead. Elevators? So um, I had uh, finally got the elevator company got back to me convinced me that we do need the work done. Um, it's gonna be $8,500. Um, there is a little bit of a lead time on the parts, um, but our elevator isn't scheduled to get inspected again until March, so hopefully that's enough time um, to be able to do it. So I, I am now ready to come with that ARPA request to spend $8,500 to bring our elevator up to the uh, reinterpreted code. Do we want to go 9,000, like up to 9,000 or something like that to get a little bit of wiggle room there? Or do we want to just say the 8,500? Well, was this a, a pretty firm? Yeah. That's what it I cost? I mean, that, that was the proposal they gave us. So okay. is, that, is that a quote that we can count on if we, if we move ahead with it now? Yes. Okay, then yep. let's just. Yeah. $8,500. So okay. ba basically what you're saying is that without without doing this, we would not be able to use the elevator. Um, we would, n not necessarily, eventually. If we didn't do it eventually, uh, probably the first time we'd fail the inspection, they'd probably give us a temporary certificate, say we're gonna come back in 90 days and it better be fixed. If it's not fixed, then they would probably shut down the elevator. Okay. All right. All right. Any, any discussion? No. It needs to get done, we need to have an elevator. I don't exactly. care, we need to be able to not do it. Okay, motion. I motion. Um, we approve ARPA funds for $8,500 for servicing and repair of the elevator in the town office building to bring it up to current interpretation. Interpretation of the code. Seconded. Do you need discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero two, and then the other two. Do we want to have any discussion on that one? On those or what's that? Do we want to discuss the other two, the the, the, the ones for the village center and the school street engineering ones. Oh yeah, that's going. To, we're going to do that next. Okay. Cool. The the elevator is a no brainer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, Jeff. School street engineering. Let's break them up into school street engineering first. Okay, so School Street Engineering, um, in order to apply for state grants to actually do the work, we need to have engineered plans of at least 25%. Um, currently, we have a final design, but um, not engineer engineering hasn't started. So these funds would go to procuring an engineering firm and um, actually creating the, the at least 25 percent designs have, have you looked at have you got some proposals for what it would what it would cost ballpark um this was a rough estimate from the designers and how much was it Seventy five thousand. and that goes to 5 10 25 30 what what percentage of completion um, that would bring us to at least 25%. Um, if we can get more out of it, a another approach, if you want me to take it this way, um, which is what we're doing with the exhaust, uh, exhaust removal system at the public safety complex is we can put out the bid and see what the bids come in at and then come and say, 
this is this is our low bid to get it you know and at that point you could say hey we want to fund it through 100 percent engineering and then we can put a bid out for that and say it's going to be 130,000 or whatever i i personally i think what i think is i'd love to have I, i'd love to ha have a put it out have an understanding what it's going to cost um so i mean it, we could we could say 75,000 but we really don't know what that 75,000 is going to get us right now right so why wouldn't why wouldn't we put it out and and tell them that we look for 10% 75 10% 25 50 75 and complete or 90 then complete And 2575 90 complete yeah and it, then 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 we know what we're going into what we're getting into and sorry just to make sure I understand so you would want the the bidder to say 10% is going to cost X much 25 is going to cost right and then we look at it and say okay we can do 75 or whatever. right okay but but I think I think we I, I think what we tr we should strive to do is we should we should find I mean, if this is a three hundred, if it if it if it's going to be three hundred thousand dollars to redesign School Street, then then we may or may not want to continue. Yep. Right. Because we because one one of the things you may be able to get money you may be able to get money, but to do the project, but the town would have to put the mo put the money towards the design. Yep. Okay. Does that make sense? What do you think, Nathaniel? Yeah, that sounds good to me. So would you prefer that I talk to an engineering company and just say, hey, can you give me rough estimates, or do you actually want us to bid the project out as alternates? Well, you could. I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to know what we're getting into. Okay. Okay? I mean, the way I feel about it is that if, if we get a rough estimate, come back and approve it on that, and then get the bids... Right. Either we're going to get different numbers back, or we've just drawn the whole thing out. If we get the bids now, we're already that far into the process. We approve it. It's this dollar amount. We know what the dollar amount is. We accept your bid. Move on forward with it. It's going to make things go faster and have us be approving a more set. So to me, this amount. was this was really one of the better things. I mean, ARP was all about. It was about putting, you know, mm -hmm. and 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 we know one thing. If you want money, if you want money from the state, you need to have shovel ready projects. If you have a shovel ready project, you you will get on their list. Just let you know, Lauren's got her hand up. Um, there's a proposal for engineering. Would that go out under the regulations of the designer selection board? And the reason I'm asking is because if it's it's procured under the provisions of the designer selection board, then your your selection is not based on fee, it's based on qualifications. So I'm just, I just wanna make sure that we're gonna to get to what you, the information that you want. Um, I don't know if it's design selection. And, and, and so I know they, they submit to the- Architecture, it's definitely under designer selection. I'm not yeah. sure about engineering services, but I think it is. And the other, the other thing is that price, price is negotiable. Also, they submit two, they submit two envelopes. One, one with designer selection. They submit two, two envelopes, and one, one is, one is price. And there is, there is a, you do have an opportunity to negotiate with the uh, architect. Negotiate, you can negotiate, but your initial selection is based yeah. on qualifications. So first you look at qualifications, then you identify, then then you go, then you can then you negotiate about price. It's a screwed up world that we live in, Lauren. <laughs> but I I don't know if an engineer engineering is the same. Um, I I don't think so, but I will double check and confirm that. Um. And again, I I in I think that personally that I. This is. I, I totally. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. 
No, I, I agree. I agree with the strategy of trying to actually get a real price so we know what it costs. I'm not objecting to that. I just want to make sure that we're not complicating it for ourselves. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure when Jeff talks, I'm sure when Jeff talks to the uh, the engineer to get a, an idea, they'll tell him if there's any problems. Well, fundamentally, whatever the process is, is going to be the process, whether we approve the money beforehand or not. Correct. It's not like it's going to change anything. The question is whether or not we approve the money before we get the quotes in. We're going to have to get the quotes anyways, and I do feel like it's going to take less total time to right, get the quotes first approved. You know, if to go a whole lot further is only 60000 you know, we may want to consider doing a little more than 50000 I'd hate to be tied to fifty thousand right now and find out, boy, for ten thousand we could have gotten to this point. I and I I think you may have some engineering firms that think they they may be more entailed to do the entire project at once versus piecemeal. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we learned our lesson about that. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. So yeah, I, well, let's talk to them. But but again, I think that that's why our I think if it, that'd be a great use of ARPA money, and personally. Oh, very much so. Um, do we want to approve up to a thousand dollars to have Verkog help us with the procurement? Yeah, that's fine. Yep. That's fine. That's fine. Motion. I motion that we spend up to a thousand dollars for procurement of an engineering design slash company to basically using uh, the services provided by yeah. uh, Furcog to. Yeah. Uh, there you go. He's got all the right words in there. Yeah. Seconded the motion made and seconded. All those in favor. Of a thousand dollars to work with for a cog, certified by saying aye. 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 Okay. What's the next one, Jeffrey? Is that three? Three zero. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Yeah, three zero. Uh, fifty thousand dollars to hire a consultant to help us look at the village center, um, the intersection, and then the approaches to the intersection. You want? To, you want? To, Start off, Lauren. Well, I think you know we made our case for it a couple of weeks ago. What I would say here is, it would be great to have a budget. I'd like us to um, possibly ex say that we can also, in this case, use um, some money towards assistance with the RFP. Um, I think that we, it's possible since it's basically you're asking someone to kind of do a visioning, sort of almost like a study that we would actually put a price on it. And so uh, you might actually put it out to bid with, this is what you want to spend versus, and I'm not, I'm not married to spending the full amount. I'd like to have the amount so that um, I think that I will reach out to some people who can help us craft an RFP that's gonna really give us what we want to have so that we have a very tight request. But it would be, I think, advantageous in this situation to know that we have a budget so that we can move it ahead. And I think my con mounting concern is that, um, you know, we want to get our information together and, and facilitate some public uh, input before DOT gets ahead of us on this. So, so one, of, one of the questions I have, Lauren, is, is how, how do we How, how do we look at or how do we define what is acceptable for the, are, are we just looking at the intersection or are we looking on either side of the intersection? Are we looking one mile north and south of it? I think how, we're looking at the village center, which is the Greeks pretty much defined at least, uh, you know, um, I think we defined it in when we did the, um, the, uh, what was the other study called? The RR? Rapid recovery um, plan. The rapid recovery, you know, 
I think we're looking at the village center, including the impact of the intersection on developing both the development and the character of the village center. So, so how, how do you, I, I guess it, it, it really matters how we define what our village center is, doesn't it? And I mean, could we, we could have two village centers. We could have one north of the intersection, one south of the, I, I, I don't know how we're going to define that. And, and do we go in and, and what, if, what if it comes back and it says a roundabout's the best thing? Are we going to accept that? Well, I think then we, I mean, I think that we take the time to explore the various options and what the impact is going to be on how that impacts the build out of the, the continued development of the village center. And then I think that, that that gives people in town more information. I think if we had a public meeting tomorrow on the intersection, we don't have anything compelling to share with people to explain this creates this situation, this supports that situation. We really just don't have the tools for people to make a considered decision about which way you know this is going to go and what the impact of that is down the road. So I think that we can craft a very tight RFP and I'm happy to you know commit that before that RFP goes out you know, we share that back with the select board and uh, obviously the Jeff will be involved in crafting it um, and that we're all on the same page before we issue it and get someone involved in helping us. But I think, you know, this is kind of what we were tasked with doing. And the longer we wait, the more out of our hands the situation is going to be. Crystal, Nathaniel, what do you guys think? So I guess the question for me becomes, do we approve a dollar amount or do we approve a, like we did with the first one, do we approve a, this is the money to help with the, the RFP and then when we get, when with the understanding that the approximate budget would be $50,000, so we have a number to give to the firms, but then when we get bids back, then we like the other, other part of it, we then have those bids brought to us and <coughs> there. Or do we if just can, approve if, the 50? If we commit to the a dollar amount and we don't spend it, does it just go back to being uh, ARPA funds? It doesn't. It doesn't move. It doesn't move from anywhere until we actually spend it. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like there are pe that I can try to get us some help working on the RFP, but it would be a lot more compelling to be able to say, we have this project funded, could you help us, you know, figure out what we're asking for, than to feel like we have to, that there's some uncertainty as to whether we're going to be able to move ahead. My, I guess my, my heart, and, and again, I'd, I, I, I'd, I'd like, I'd like, but I know it's impossible to, to have people well and, and I say that because I, I look at the senior housing which hopefully they're going into soon right hopefully soon okay um, and, and I thought that 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 would be very hard to not support but but there's no such thing in today's society of having a hundred percent agreement on almost anything and and I and I just I, I just so so I look at and and I, I, I do understand that the, the state will come in and many times will have a solution and that's a solution to everything that being said is that so it would be it'd be interesting if we actually had a plan for the state but it would also be interesting if that the plan that our people put together mimic the plan that the state would propose. Um, I think we absolutely have to work with someone who has tra traffic and transportation credibility. But I think our interest 
the state being the Department of Transportation has an interest in traffic and we have an interest in traffic and the village center. And I think that those, whether or not those are totally aligned is what we need to explore. I don't necessarily think it's a bad idea to have our town have more control over how that process goes and not just leave it up to the state to decide how they do it because they, they may just make a decision that as Lauren is saying, is not, fixes the traffic situation, but doesn't do anything for the village center. And I don't think it's a necessarily a bad idea. My, my concern is where did the $50,000 number come from? If we say $50,000 to the firms that we're giving, getting bids from, they're gonna come back with $50,000 proposals. Do we wanna say 30? Do we wanna say 100? Do we wanna say 15? Um, it, it's just, Whatever, we, whatever number we pick is going to be what they come back to us with an offer of because that's what we're giving them. Um, so maybe the, the question is, do we think $50,000 is going to be in the ballpark of what this is going to cost? Do we have any kind of um, precedent in terms of similar projects that we've completed that recently? That was the number that was given to Jeff and I over three years ago when we talked with someone about, uh, someone from UMass about what it might cost to get a reasonable uh, look at this. Now, whether when we write the RFP, whether we can, you know, whether we think we can tailor it down or we want to include more, I think that that, I'm not looking to spend money that we don't need to spend. But I'm also would like to know that we have the funds to get this going after, you know, three years of kind of you know, trying to get it going and not actually being able to do the work. So I'd like to, I'd, I'd love to have, if if we have somebody, and, and, and I'm going to kind of agree with Nathaniel, I'd love to have somebody that's that's done this. I, I, I don't know, I don't know if anybody has done this. Um, and our, our village, our center, and, and I, I guess, so if you looked at Hadley, where would Hadley's village center be? Well, I think theirs is harder to define than ours because they have a really significant commercial district. I mean, I guess for the chunk of 47 where like the, the center of Hadley is is kind of their village center, but yeah. it's not their center of, of actual the town, you know? It's not where- yeah, Good point. Be, but but I, I would say if you look at Hadley, they just they hold their tractor parades going down route route nine, nine not 47 yeah right. right they they go right down route nine they when they did their bicentennial or even no, when they do their memorial day parades they, the memorial day they 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 go right down route nine where major thoroughfare whereas we go across 116 we don't go down 116 by any means right yeah so so they they've embraced that road Route Nine at in as their center of town, and they just they just made it work instead of make thinking of it as a as a detriment. They just think of it, and and I guess you know you look at South Hadley. South Hadley's take the intersection of Route Nine and Forty Seven, or One Sixteen and Forty Seven, and and they they they've just embraced that and and not thought of it. As a detriment, they just used I would, it. I would, I would, I would not agree with that, Tom, because I would say that in South Hadley, they made a huge investment in uh, developing the town center when they put in that whole uh, re uh, commercial complex where the where the bookstore is and and yep. Johnny's and everything. That was a huge investment to enhance the town center. Well, I, but I agree with that, but 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 that was that's their center of town and it's at the intersection. That, that crossroads, the cro a crossroads is often the center of, of a town. Okay. Yeah. So so I guess there's different ways I mean, there's, there's going to be a limit to what we can do, uh, you know, as I said with the 
you know, just like with the senior housing, there is a limit to what we as the town can do, but we're not, we're not uh, helpless. So, you know, we made a huge impact in the center of town by investing in a project that, you know, wasn't totally ours uh, for Sanderson Place. So I think. All right. So, how much? What, what were you looking for? Uh, seed money, Lauren. Fifty thousand. Well, it would be. I mean, however you want to word it, it can be. I would love to say that we are setting aside fifty thousand dollars. I'd I'd like a provision that we can spend up to a certain amount, um, getting us to the RFP. Whether that's working with the COG or um, I'm hoping that I can get someone to help us for either without cost or with a minimal cost, but maybe we could offer a little money. Um, do you have an idea of how much? Back to the board with the RFP before we issue it. Do you have an idea of how much of that you'd like us to earmark for that? A thousand dollars, something like that, or? Is... Um, I, would, I don't know what what the COG um, charges to do, uh, to do that, Jeff. I don't know if you have an idea and I'd like to have, I would like to potentially be able to offer someone thousand dollars if necessary to help us with the RFP but I'm hoping that we can do that without cost yeah the, the cog is seven hundred to a thousand dollars so do we want to say approve up to fifty thousand or to, to set aside up to fifty thousand dollars of ARPA money for the project <laughs> with a thousand of that being available for getting the RFP, the RFP? Do we want to do that? Or if you want to say 2000 and that might cover someone helping us and plus whatever the COG would co uh, charge to do the bidding. Does that work for you guys? So, so I, you know, I'm, I'm not... I'm, I'm not adverse to... And, and I'll tell... And, and a reason, my reasonings is... Totally un unsolicited. Um, last week, there was a, a new person who works in in our where I, I work, and we were just talking, and I and and she was just talking about uh, the town that she was living in, and about how it is a vibrant location, and things are happening, and and, and I says, oh, where do you live? And she lives in Sunderland. Um, this was so this was the second the second person second family um that made it was almost in, in the the same comment about Sunderland and and I would say that it's because of some of the things that we've been working on for the last 20 plus years but it just seems like yesterday uh right seems like um yesterday. And, and and so I, I would say that our next growth, one, well, I, there's a couple things, but one of them is, that could be the most divisive, is what happens at that intersection. Um, but I know just making the intersection its present con configuration, taking out the the turn lanes was like a major thing. So I, I, I think long term, we, we have to have information to talk to the state or we'll get another blue bridge. Um, and that happened 26 years ago, where all of a sudden we woke up one day and they yeah, saw that. Bridge was below. Oh, huh? yeah. Well, and, but see, Crystal I'm just, used to it now, but I, the day I, I, that that I, was blue. But, but oh. I can tell I can tell you there's still there's old time residents in town that still do not like the Blue Bridge. So, um, <laughs> but you you just kind of made my my thought process what because we ended up not having a say in what color the bridge was because we didn't tell the state what were acceptable colors to begin with, and part of the state thing was that the contractor could use. Um, there's 10, uh, at the time, I think there was 10 allowed colors that was by the DOT and the contractor just got done rebuilding the Tappan Zee Bridge or something, had a bunch of 
blue paint, so that's why we got a blue bridge. So, um, I, I I guess, but but your comment was right. It's like, well, we should stay one step ahead, and and I I I think that again, there's not a problem for us being proactive instead of being reactive because it's also it's very hard to fight reactively. Mm -hmm. So. So you want you're looking for 50, Lauren? That's what the study said. Yeah, 50 with two of it being available for getting the bids, getting the RFP. So, so how 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 is a, how is a. So you're gonna can we uh, make the uh, final RFP that has to be okayed by the the board before we uh, in consultation with the village center group. The RFP before it goes out. Before it goes out, yeah. yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, it works for me. Lauren? Yeah, I think we're okay. an advisory committee to you. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'll entertain a motion. I motion we use 50,000 of our, or up to 50,000 of ARPA funds, 2,000 to be set aside or you know earmarked for getting the RFP written. And then coming back to the select board before prior to awarding the RFP. Seconded. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Without hearing any more discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff three zero. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you. All right, select board updates. Jeff, yeah. you're going to talk about the capital planning thing in your updates, right? The frontier request? Yes. Okay, so I won't bring that up then. I'll wait for you. I got nothing else. I got I'll stop. Yeah. All right. Jeff, town yeah. administrator. I have a few this evening. Um, uh, the first one is we've been approached to help a, a Pioneer Valley wide effort to understand air quality and they would like to put an air quality sensor um, on the town office building because we have 24-7 Wi-Fi and we have outdoor electricity. So I just wanted to see if there were any concerns from the select board before I... Um, I'm assuming them. that's no cost to us. That's No cost to us, no maintenance. If somebody comes and hits it with a baseball bat, we're not liable for it. None of that stuff. Okay. Yeah. But it's going to be on top of the building? It is going to be on the side of the building. All right. I think it's going to be... Six to ten, six to ten feet off the ground. Are you or somebody else going to have approval over where it goes? We don't end up with it sticking like out the front and. It'll have to be close to a power source, which I believe is either the back of the building or there's uh, electrical outlets on either side. Okay. Just a, I just would like to to have somewhere in there or something that says that. They can't just show up on a Saturday and put it in, and we come in on Monday and it's there. Some kind of approval from you or someone in the building of where it should go. Yeah, and how are they attaching it to the building? Uh, I believe that they would use masonry screws and screw the sensor on, and then have a, a plug in. Yeah, and it'd have to be calibrated and everything. Yeah, I'm just you know obviously this is a very old building and. Yep. Attaching stuff like that is. Well, as long as the guy doesn't sneeze while he's putting it up, we should be fine. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if it was something that was going to be like on a pole next to the building or if it's truly attached yeah. to the building. Attached to the building. Yep. I mean, from my perspective, Air quality is important. If this is a study that that's trying to get done, I'm, I'm even if it does put a couple small holes in the side of our building, I think it's a, a valuable thing to to support and to participate in. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to make sure there were no concerns. Um, the mowing contract is a one-year contract, renewable for up to three years. Um, it was signed two years ago, renewed last year. Uh, it expires on January 1st, and we're supposed to notify um, Mr. Ahern, who is the 
mowing contractor uh, 30 days before it expires if we intend to continue. Um, I am recommending that we do continue. Uh, is that the one thing I didn't print? No, I did print it. Um, so year three would be for approximately $15,190. It might be a little bit higher than that. Um, Mr. O'Hearn took a look at the new elementary school playground that has some grassy areas and because of the reconfiguration, it would have to be hand mowed. So um, I'm just waiting for confirmation on what exactly the price would be, but I think that I would at least like to send him the letter to say, hey, we'd like to exercise it and let him come back and say, hey, that, that price I quoted you is gonna be a little different and then work out the details. I, I just know in the last, uh, with the present person that has a contract, we have not received very, any complaints, nope. and that's totally unusual. So I would say that I, I would recommend. That's high praise right there. Yeah. It, it seems that the athletic fields are being well taken care of, the cemetery is being well taken care of, the schools being well taken care of. I would say let's let's stay with it. Wonderful. Thank you. You want to vote? Yeah. All right. Motion. I motion we um, award the contract to the third uh, take the, the yeah extension. Yeah. yeah, the extension. Robert Ahern. Seconded. All right. Motion made. Seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff Fijero. Thank you. Um, we also. Uh, received notification from Frontier. Uh, they are doing a capital project expected to cost $300,000 to renovate the tennis courts. Um, and they are seeking $100,000 from the four Frontier towns. Sunderland's uh, estimated contribution would be $23,500. I'm not asking for any money at this point. Um, asking if the select board would prefer to apply for CPA fund, uh, prefer that I apply for CPA funds for this project. Um, if we want to consider it a capital project, if we want to make it its own um, warrant article, how we want to approach this particular project. If I can just add, because um, I was at the meeting, um, there, there's a lot of capital projects in the works. There's a lot of stuff that's going on with the roof, especially, and other things. Uh, this is one of possibly the only one or possibly one of very few things that we could apply to CPA if we wanted to, um, which is why this is coming up now and why it's being you know, presented in this way. Um, and at least from my perspective, we, we should be trying to, to put this on CPA if we can, because we're already going to be going to the town with a lot of requests for this, um, let alone for the, the Sunderland capital requests as well. So, my two cents. Jeff, do you know when the last time they uh, did work at the, uh, sun, the uh, tennis courts? No. If I'm remembering from the meeting, it's been 15 years or something like that. Do you have any, do you have any, how much they, that they're used? I can get that information. And so are, they, are they open to the public? They're open to the public. Um, and in fact, one of the things that's being thrown around is having it painted not just for tennis, but also for pickleball, because there's actually a very strong pickleball presence at the, at the courts. Um, very vocal, very, <laughs> it gets used a lot for that. Um, and, um, what they what they were saying at the meeting is that it, it gets pretty much constant use, um, and is the only one, the only publicly available one for quite a distance as well. <coughs> so, so what 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 are the uh, what what option you're recommending, Jeff? Uh, I would agree with Nathaniel. I I think last year. There was one, one or two <coughs> CPA projects, maybe. So I think that, you know, if we were inundated with CPA project proposals in the past couple of years, I might be a little bit more hesitant. But I think that uh, 
the CPC is looking for projects to fund. So, and this is an appropriate source of funds for this project. So I think that, <laughs> let's yeah. do it. It was also thrown around that this is an easy, easy thing to ask the, the town because no one has to pay any extra money for us to fund this. Um, whereas if we do a warrant article or if we go capital route, you know, we're, we're, we're back to going to the town and asking for them for money. So not a bad way of getting that out of the way. Okay. CPA then it is. All right. So I have three more quick things, just updates. Uh, the insurance advisory committee met, they are putting out a survey to employees to try and get an understanding of to a to try and educate employees about the offerings the benefits of our current plan the costs um, and then try and get an understanding of we, what is more important benefits or costs or how employees look at those things and value them and, and try and get an idea of if there is a less expensive plan that maybe has fewer benefits, how many more people would sign up? Because that's something else we need to think about as we're budgeting. Um, so the survey results are, or the, the survey responses are due December 15th. So I'll certainly report back um, if the insurance advisory committee doesn't do it themselves. Um, Good question on that. You, you may not have that number readily available, but do you know roughly what percentage of people take advantage of our plan currently? Um, percentage of employees, I would say it's pretty low, but I can find out. Okay, so mo most people are, are choosing to get their insurance through spouses or otherwise? I believe so. Okay. I'm not sure that that's a, you know has a bearing on anything today, but I just am curious. Yeah, I'd say I I'm if I had to guess, I would say about a third or less, but I, I'll find that out. Didn't we have those? I'm trying to think of when we were looking at this um, personnel last year. I went. Yeah, I know, I know we had the number, of the people. numbers of people on each yeah. plan, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I just want to make sure I have yeah. the numbers right. I'm just asking because if it, if it is only a third and we're and we are talking about having a plan that might be more enticing to people, there's enough room there for that to be a big big change. If all of a sudden we go from a third to two thirds, if all of a sudden we go from a third to two thirds, we could see that being a, a big a big change in town. Yeah. So I think that, that 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 survey sounds like a great idea for that reason. Great. Um, then. Earlier this morning, I was at uh, the public safety complex um, with a bidder for the exhaust removal system. Um, so ho we hope to have um, a response. I think responses are due early December. So um, I'll probably be coming back with an ARPA request shortly, but the chief was there. They talked about uh, how, how the, I guess, system is going to hook up to the exhaust um, for each of the vehicles, how the vehicles might need to be um, enhanced so that the <coughs> magnets can attract, um, all the setup stuff so the, the bidders have an idea of exactly what we want and they can give us accurate quotes. Um, so that's moving forward. And then the last thing is... We applied every year. Um, our insurance company offers risk management grants of up to $10,000. This year, we applied for two things, $7,500 to do a load calculation at the public safety complex, which is the bare minimum we need in order to engineer an HVAC system. So hopefully we're gonna get that taken care of. Uh, so the, we were awarded that, we were not awarded uh, about uh, $2,000, the drain in the Sally Port um, on the police side is getting clogged and they wanted to just clear it out all the way. Um, and we had applied for that and it was not accepted. So I just want to give those updates. Is that something that we're going to see as an ARPA request down the line then or? It might be, um, I don't know. I think the chief said 
he knew somebody that had a pretty long snake and he was just going to try and snake it and see how it goes. Okay. Um, but yes, it may come back. Okay. Great. So last year, spring, early summer, Tritown Beach came to us to ask if someone wanted to join. We asked for some information. Can you follow up? Because we haven't heard it. I don't believe we've heard anything from them, have we? Um, we got some very <laughs> basic information um, as far as rate sheets from the last few years. Right, we need some. We need to talk. I, see if they, you can arrange someone from that group to talk, talk to us. Okay. Yep. That's all I have. Huh? That's all I have. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Entertain a motion. A motion we adjourn. Sorry. What? Just oh. I. You said I, that was it. I know, but I didn't. I, I didn't put this on on important dates. But I, the town office building is going to be closed Thursday in observance of Thanksgiving. All right. They're not going to be here for Thanksgiving. All right. For slackers. I'll have my dinner somewhere else. Okay. How much should we adjourn now? All right. Seconded. Anything else there, Jeff? No. All right. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero declares out at uh, 732. And I uh, hope everyone has a uh, a very fine Thursday.